So in this video, I want to talk about the activation of the innate immune system in response to bacteria. So let's just pose a scenario. So let's just suppose we are hanging out in a jacuzzi and on the way out, boom, we hit a nail in our big toe. And unfortunately on this nail were some bacteria sticking. So we introduced now the bacteria into deeper tissue. So what is going to happen? Well, the bacteria is going to be greeted by the innate immune system. And there are two guards stationed in our tissue. Guard number one is a macrophage. It has this kidney-shaped nucleus. That's a macrophage. So macrophage, macro is Greek for big, and phage is Greek for eater. So the macrophage is our big eater. It eats up stuff. So it's kind of our garbage collector. They are always patrolling and seeing if they find stuff to eat. Now, if it finds a bacteria, it's going to be very excited because it can phagocytose it. So one thing that the macrophage is going to do is eat up stuff. So the macrophage will kind of engulf the bacteria and eat it up. So that's kind of the mouth of the macrophage and the bacteria goes in it, engulfs it and eats it up by phagocytosis. So that's one thing that the macrophage is going to do. The other thing that the macrophage is going to do, it's going to call for help. So the macrophage is very important for us also for the immune cell response in recruiting other cells and making a good setup so that more cells can come to the site of infection and help clear the infection. And therefore, because the macrophage does these two things, eating and kind of calling for help, I also want to give the macrophage a slogan. We're going to give every cell a slogan, which is eat and call because that's really what the macrophage is going to do, eating up stuff and calling for help. So now the question is, how does it call for help? So this is our macrophage. And so the macrophage is equipped on its surface with so-called PRRs. So this stands for pathogen recognition receptors. So as our name already implies, these are receptors that can recognize pathogens. Very famous examples are the toll-like receptors, TLRs, or not like receptors, NLRs. And these are just receptors that upon stimulation, so when they kind of see a bacteria and specific surface molecules, they are going to send a signal to the nucleus and then the macrophage will react to it by producing pro-inflammatory cytokines. And famous examples are going to be TNF or IL-1. And what are they doing? Well, it's already in the name pro-inflammatory. So they trigger inflammation. So what is inflammation? Well, if you hit an alien on your big toe, how is it? toe going to look? Well, it's red, hot, and swollen. That's inflammation. Red, hot, swollen. And how is that mediated? And how is that helping us to get rid of the pathogen? Well, if um, we TNF, let's say, triggers redness, heat and, and swelling, what does it do? Well, it, for example, mediates arteriolar dilation. So the smooth muscles are going to dilate. As a consequence, in a nearby blood vessel, which I've drawn here, here's the capillaries, these are the endothelial cells, then there's going to be increased blood flow because it's going to mediate vasodilation, blood flow. If there's increased blood flow, well, there's increased capillary pressure, and then also what uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines do is they make these little gaps. They kind of lead to endothelial contraction so that the endothelial cells get actually a little bit smaller. And then kind of you increase capillary pressure. You can get more stuff just into the tissue so more cells can arrive. Then what else is going to happen? The macrophage also is going to make chemokines. And chemokines, I always like to call them as little traffic directors for the immune system. So once they are secreted, these are little molecules, it's kind of a little taste for other cells to kind of, um, or a smell to see where they're supposed to go. So uh, the macrophage actually will release CXCL8 in particular. And this is a chemokine that is very important to attract neutrophils.
And that's actually what's also going to help us because I said already before, eat and call. So it's going to call for help. And which cells are going to arrive? Well, the macrophage friend, which are kind of circulating in the nearby blood vessels, which are the neutrophils. So let's draw in here some neutrophils. They have this trilobular nucleus and they are patrolling kind of in the blood. And once kind of the scenario is set and the macrophage kind of sets the scenario by inducing inflammation, by making more blood to come, by making these little gaps, by getting the cells to the site of infection and releasing particularly um, chemokines that will attract the neutrophil, the neutrophil will exit here because that's where these chemokines are released. So that where these little taste molecules are released. And so the chem and the neutrophil will smell that and gonna go to the site of infection. And then it's gonna show up here, so it's gonna Extravasite, it's gonna get here through this gap, so that's the neutrophil making its, its way through this endothelial cells, through these little gaps here, and it's gonna show up here. And the neutrophil is also a very good phagocytotic cell. So it's also gonna eat up the bacterium. So let's also maybe draw a little neutrophil that is eating up the bacterium that it has it's in its mouth, so that's a neutrophil. And what is the neutrophil then is going to do? Well, it's just going to die off. That's a neutrophil. It's just going to die. It's weeping. It's dying. And therefore, we're going to give the neutrophil the slogan. I'm writing it here. Eat and die. So that's going to be our slogan for the neutrophil because it eats up stuff and then it actually has a pretty short lifespan. So it's going to eat up stuff and then basically die away. Okay, so what else is happening in an innate immune response upon bacterial infection? I said in the beginning, there are two guards stationed throughout our tissue. Number one guard is a macrophage. Number two guard is the dendritic cell. So here's the dendritic cell often abbreviated with DC. And the dendritic cell is also a phagocytic cell, so it can also eat up stuff. We're gonna give it the slogan, eat, show, and run. Because although it can also eat up stuff, what it really is good at is showing stuff that it has eaten, so it's proudly presenting, and then running off to get some extra help. So let's see how it's doing that. So it eats up stuff that it finds, like the macrophage, but in contrast, it's very good in showing it. So in showing what it has eaten. And remember, cells don't have hands to show stuff. So how do they show stuff? They show it via MHC molecules. So it's going to show a part of what it has eaten, some sort of a peptide, and then it's showing it and running off. It is running off through this afferent lymph vessel, which is going to bring the cell with what it has eaten to the lymph node. And there, it will initiate an adaptive immune response. It will see if it can find a T cell that can recognize this, going to activate the T cell. The T cell is going to eventually become a T helper cell. And then this T helper cell will eventually help a B cell to become a plasma cell, which is then the cell that makes antibodies. And the antibodies are going to come back and help clear the infection. So you can see here clearly that the dendritic cell job is a very important one because this is going to be the cell that's going to get the specialists, that's going to get the experts, that's going to activate the adaptive immune guys to produce their weapons and then the weapons are supposed to come, up, come back via the thoracic duct. Here is going to show up in, in the blood vessel and then because we have um, and these little gaps here, um, these, let's say, antibodies will also get to the site of infection and help clear the infection. So you can also see that how important this first stage of the macrophage is in overall contributing that cells that will arrive at the site of infection will find their exit and will help clear the infection. 
This concludes the video on the activation of the innate immune system upon bacterial infection.